emails, Facebook messages and tweets are pouring in from around the world in response to our new investigation about a drug you or a loved one may have taken. A small white pill called mefloquine was intended to prevent malaria, but now many veterans, former Peace Corps volunteers and other world travelers say it ravaged their lives. Investigative reporter Andrea McCarran and photojournalist John Moger reveal how the weekly dosages never showed up in veterans medical records. When you're 21, you follow orders. Yeah. Sean was among tens of thousands of American service members who took mefloquine, a drug to prevent malaria. When the chain of command tells you to take something, you just take it. You don't have a choice. We attempted to give folks the best possible agent to protect them to the highest degree. To do any less would have done them a disservice. How many service members took the drug? That's difficult to answer because in many cases, veterans say, no records were kept. I had no free screenings, I had no warning. I was ordered to take a mefloquine pill every single day. Even though it's supposed to be a weekly dosage? I did not know it was supposed to be a weekly dosage. I didn't get a prescription. I didn't even have it logged in my uh, pharmacy log that I ever got the drug. There's no proof in your medical records, but you are 100% certain you took that drug? 100%. 100% sure. Many veterans say record keeping was shoddy at best. So you took mefloquin on a daily basis for about a month. Yes. Yet that doesn't show up anywhere in your records? No. Before 2012, few people got it in their medical records. It was just handed out candy. Isn't it the protocol, no matter what the medication, that that be in a service member's records? Yes. I've resubmitted claims multiple times to the VA in their and they're saying, oh, well, it's not in your medical record. If that did, in fact, occur, that was not within the DOD policy, and it should not have occurred. In 2004, even the VA warned of its possible long-term health effects, yet the drug was still dispensed for nearly a decade until the FDA warning of 2013. They just handed me a bottle and said, hey, if you have dreams, just push through them. After that, the military was only supposed to use it as a drug of last resort. So from March of 2013 to November, December of 2013, I took Mepoquin every week, religiously. Late last year, the Veterans Affairs Administration awarded its first and only 100% permanent and total disability rating to a Marine Corps veteran who served in Somalia. That means he'll get full benefits for his severe service-related injuries, all attributed to mefloquine. And we're looking for answers in solid science so that it's, it's not the flavor of the week or a rush of emotion, but that it's rooted in good science. Later this year, the VA hopes to release a survey of 30,000 veterans who served in Iraq and Afghanistan. It includes questions about mefloquine. I just want to let my brothers and sisters know that they're not alone to not give up. We have to be stronger than the side effects and the damage. Many service members believe the high suicide rate among our veterans may be linked to the use of this drug. If they're misdiagnosed with PTSD or traumatic brain injury, veterans may not get the treatment, Leslie, that they desperately need. So this drug is now rarely prescribed. What's next? Well, we are told by multiple sources that a replacement drug called Tefenequin is being fast-tracked for approval by the FDA. Many believe that's a real problem because the drug was tested on the Australian military and several Several veterans there tell us it's proven just as harmful, if not worse, than mefloquine. Right now, we're working on that report and many others, Leslie, related to this drug. And we will be following it all because of your reporting. Thank you for that. You can watch all of Andrea's reports.